Hello everyone, it's Plagin here, and today on this Plagcast, we're going to be talking about the Winter 2021 Anime Recap. So, in one of my previous Plagcasts, we actually talked about a uh, variety of the shows that I'd be watching, and all that good stuff of the, the season of anime, and the ones I was like looking forward to after having viewed just a couple of their episodes. And so we uh, kind of went down there, talking about what my first impressions were of the show, saying which ones I thought were going to be great, which ones were amazing, all that fun jazz. And, uh, well, some of my predictions were on, some of them were off, and uh, that's what we're going to be doing this time. So I am going to be talking about the ones that I didn't talk about uh, previously as well, uh, namely the ones that had to deal with, uh, um, like the longer running runs, like I had mentioned Log Horizon, but I didn't talk about it too much, and I mentioned like Attack on Titan and stuff like that, and I didn't men I didn't really talk about those too much in the previous video because they were like sensational. Like, of course you guys are gonna be watching this, right? You know, and so uh, I just kind of ignored those. But in this one, since they've actually gone through their season, I figured I will go ahead and talk about those a little more. So, as my usual way of doing things. Everything's mostly unscripted. I do have just some notes written down on uh, the, the shows, just to jog my memory. Uh, it's very simple stuff, like, Dropped was quite boring, or, uh, like, meh, it's interesting, shrug? <laughs> that's the, that's the, basically the notes that I have on it. Um, but, yeah, I figured I would go ahead and go through some of this. So some of the, some of the shows are still going. Some of them have a full, like, 24 episodes. Some of them, the season just ended, and there's another season for it. Some of them have ended, um, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually curious how some will go, because some of them left on, like, good cliffhangers, and I'm hopefully hoping some of them get seasons uh, soon, like second seasons and all that good stuff. So I'm going to look one thing up while I kind of just ramble here. And... Uh, because there was one thing I was curious about, about if one ended or not, and it did. Okay, gotcha. So, we'll get on that in a moment. So, first of all, welcome, welcome. We'll be talking about the season's anime, as I said before. I'm kind of just rambling. I don't script these. Sorry. Uh, anyway, we're going to start out with the worst, in my opinion, and go all the way to the best. And the best will surprise you. Uh, if you watched my last one, I think, I, I don't remember the exact uh, ones that I did. I think I might have either not mentioned this one at all, or I mentioned it and I was like, meh. But, uh, regardless, it, it was definitely a surprise for me, the one that I thought was the best this season. Uh, so, get ready, because here we go. So, before we jump in and I show you, like, the thumbnails of all the, the different ones that I... Uh, liked here in my little uh, my little blackboard in the back that currently says Plague Cast Anime 2021 Anime Recap. I'm going to be throwing up thumbnails from the shows uh, up there, or just like thumbnails representing the show, essentially. Nothing too fancy, as you know. Uh, let's talk about the series that I dropped. The ones that I was like, mm, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not watching this anymore. Uh, <clears throat> without much ado, uh, Scar on the Praetor uh, it, it was kind of not my thing. There was a lot of, like, I don't know how to really explain it. It wasn't great. I didn't like it. It was boring. It didn't really capture my attention. Um, it was just a bunch of, like, really hot guys. And, like, yeah. Throw a couple waifus in there and maybe I would have watched it. But there was one that showed up, but not enough to save the show. Uh... I uh, definitely was like, man, why am I watching this half the time that I was sitting there watching the show? So that's the first one I dropped. Um, I also dropped King's Raid. And King's Raid, if you remember my other talks about it, it was very generic. Very uh, like, oh, I'm a hero. I'm going to save the world, yada, yada. And every time, I, uh, every time a new episode came out, I would be like, uh I gotta watch this one again and I would watch it and I'd be like yep that's how that would go yep and uh, just very generic I don't, maybe it picks up later on 
But I got like maybe seven episodes in and I was still like, oof, not great. And I think it's like a full, like, it's like 24 episodes or something, ain't it? Let me, let me look that up. Hold on. Oops. Getting out too fast. King's Rage anime. Ooh, woo, woo. Let's just look this up. It is 26 episodes, apparently. So I, I might, it might not have been this last season I talked about, or like the previous season, and then I just didn't like talk about it further. Um, but honestly, I don't know how the hell this show got 26 episodes when other shows that need 26 episodes and are actually good didn't get them. Like, this is a, a very generic and, I thought, boring show. It has some cool character designs. Um, not the main characters, though. The main character was like, oh, here's a sword fighting main character here's a generic sorceress girl with a, a wizard hat here's a, a priestess who looks exactly like a priestess would look here's a, an assassin kind of rogue character who has a, a scarf and uh, two knives of course as you do with uh, assassin characters and uh, i was like no I'm not doing that um next one i dropped was called The Armor Shop for Ladies and Gentlemen, the second season. I actually watched the first one uh, a while ago, and I was like, ooh, cool, a second season come out for this? And either it's not what I remembered, or I don't like how the second season is. Because the second season, it's like, it's a first, first of all, it's a short anime in the first place. So it's like maybe eight minutes long, I think. It's not very long at all. Um, you can like totally binge the entire thing in like a short span of time. But, uh, they divided it up into like a main story and then there was like a sub story towards the second half and i did not like this second half of the story so basically i was watching half of a show and it was bland i felt i don't know i didn't like it so i dropped that after like the first couple um the next one that i dropped was uh hortensia saga something like that and it was another one of those like King's Raid where it was kind of generic. Um, it, it had some good elements, but overall it was just one of those, hey, I'm the good guy, I'm gonna do my thing and try and like save the world or some shit, I don't know. It, it got boring after a couple episodes. It also was like, why, why am I watching this? And even after watching the episode, I still felt like uh, that, was, that was a waste of my time. I, I could have been doing literally anything else. But, uh, yeah. Well, those are the, the ones that I dropped. Uh, there are, a, well, there's one long-running uh, show that I am keeping up on, which is One Piece, which so far, and I don't know when the, the season air quotes kind of goes it's in the the wano arc um and uh, real quick anyone who doesn't want to be spoiled on one piece you can go ahead and mute the stream and we'll give you a couple seconds here to do so uh because i want to talk about it but uh the, you can unmute when the thumbnail changes uh where it says plague cast it'll change to the first actual show we're going to talk about here in a moment but i just want to get my thoughts on one piece's current arc kind of thing going out there um so anyway I hope you're muted, because we're going to get into spoiler territory now. So the Wano arc, it's where they're like in a feudal Japan kind of area, right? And, you know, they're, they're trying to take out Kaido, I think the plan is, of the Animal King pirates. And the Wano arc was superb. It's great. I've enjoyed every step of the way so far, except the, like, recent arc. So... Right before they actually go to the, the Skull Island to, like, fight Kaido and Big Mom and all that kind of stuff, there's, like, a short little time skip. Like, they're all ready to go, they're getting ready, they're about to go, and then the next episode, all their, like, work of assembling troops, of building ships, is just destroyed. Everything's destroyed. Um, there's no, like, reason why it was. There's no, like, scenes of it. You just see the, the main, like, seven samurai crying, being like, we gotta do this now, yada yada, and all that kind of crap um, in front of, like, all these wrecked ships. And you see, like, oh, the One Piece uh, uh, ship, the Sunny, got 
air quotes, blown up. Uh, we don't know if it actually was because we didn't actually see it get blown up. We just saw like them shoot cannons or rockets at it, and then explosions ensued. So it is probably not destroyed, um, knowing the One Piece pirates, uh, or the Straw Hats anyway. Um, and then from there, we get like a fucking flashback to Odin. Uh, and I don't like it at all. It's boring. It's unnecessary. I don't care about what happened like decades in the past in the world's history. Um, I care about the one, uh, the Straw Hat Pirates, right? Um, so I don't give a shit about what is happening now uh, with, with Odin and all that kind of stuff. So I've just been, I, I think I've watched the last two fully because they were somewhat interesting with like Odin and Roger and uh, Whitebeard uh, interacting and whatnot. But the first couple where it was just Odin like doing stuff on Wano and being part of the Whitebeard's crew for a bit, I, I basically skipped through those and was like, oh, this is a bunch of irrelevant, unnecessary information um, that we've already learned for the most part. We, we've learned through the samurai that, you know, uh, Odin was a good guy. The, the one thing that we learned uh, that was kind of important is how Odin met his wife and that his kids were born on a pirate ship. That's kind of cool. Um, other than that, we also learned that Odin can read the ponyglyphs, the red ones and whatnot, which is what he and him going with Roger to find the, the one piece at the edge of the world, which is where the one straw hats are going anyway. Um, which... Really, all that the last couple episodes has been is just Gold Roger and his crew with Odin now uh, following in the one... Well, not really following in their footsteps, but it's following the path that uh, the Straw Hats did already and finding the Pony Glyphs, basically. It, it's unnecessary. It feels like it's just wasting time at this point. That's my thoughts on it, um, essentially. But, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just discuss the, the, the season of anime that I actually watched and uh, cared about. So let's, <clears throat> okay, so for those of you who didn't just catch that little bit before, uh, I said let's go ahead and go on to the section where I talk about shows that I actually watched to completion, air quotes, considering some of them are still kind of going uh, regardless. Um, so, I have 18 shows right now that I watched this season um, that I'm going to be talking about. And this one is the lowest of those 18 shows. And uh, the first, like, couple, um, they're all pretty much equal, I would say. Um, but, but this season had a few shows that... It was, it was like the other ones I mentioned that I dropped, where I was like, oh, I have to watch this show now. But unlike the other ones, these shows that are on the list still, they actually drew my attention to make me be like, okay, I'll watch it again next week, right? And the first of those is this one called Wonder Egg Priority. Honestly, if you ask me what the hell happened in this show, I have no idea. It, I, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. But uh, basically, the overall, like, thing was, was pretty meh. Um, it, it's very forgettable to me, in, in my opinion. Like, I can't really tell what was going on most of the time. It kind of was weird. The end couple episodes really forwarded the plot a lot. I think, but uh, yeah. Also, uh, during this whole thing, I'm going to start off the beginning of the discussion on the show with no spoilers, and then I'm going to be switching to spoilers. Uh, so right now, we're going to be switching to spoilers. So if you don't want to hear spoilers on this show, uh, go ahead and mute again until the next thumbnail pops up and takes the Wonder Priority one's place. Okay, ready? You gone? Bye? Okay. So... Wonder Egg Priority is about the girl named I, right? And 
her friend committed suicide. And so she, like, hears this call one day and gets this egg that breaks and apparently takes her to, like, a parallel world to fight these things with, like, this almost magical girl ability, kind of. But, like, they don't transform. They just have weapons. And uh, they try to save these girls who committed suicide from the, like, monsters that are trying to get them. Um, but they're not really actually alive because they were already kind of dead. It's like parallel, parallel, parallel world stuff is kind of what's going on, right? And uh, basically, the long and short of it, I, the blue-haired one in the background there, meets the other three while trying to purchase eggs to break open because apparently if you save enough of these girls who killed themselves, um, your friend who killed themselves or whoever who killed themselves in your life will be brought back. And uh, that's the whole premise of the show until the last couple of episodes. Okay. And so it's basically them going in here and kind of just fighting to save these girls, to bring back the girls that they lost, uh, essentially. And it seems to be a show that deals with, like, suicide and bullying and, like, stuff like that, right? At least at first it did. Now I have no idea. It's weird. But, uh... Yeah. Uh, so anyway, they go through and do all this, and then towards the end of the show, we find out that, like, it's I think it's Akka and Araka, these, like, mannequin dummy things that are, like, the guardians of this garden thing. Um, they had this, like, AI daughter, air quote, when they were actually people, and this AI daughter thing is apparently what's causing all these girls to kill themselves. And... So they're, they're trying to find these warriors of Essos or Eros or e it's E-O-S. It's Essos, I think. Eos? I don't know. And to do that, they, they, that's what these four girls are basically candidates for and whatnot in order to, like, battle these things. And the, the AI girl apparently made these other, like, semi-AI girls that are, like, weird bug head creature girls things that traumatize the other three. But I find, and it's like, I'm going to stand up to you, yada, yada, and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah. And basically we find out the reason for all of this is that the AI girl ended up getting jealous of, like, I think it's Araka or Akka, one of the two guys uh, who ended up getting married and having a kid of her own. And so the AI girl just fucking straight up throws an electrical appliance into the wife's bathtub while she's bathing, kills her, and then... They save the child who was in her womb, right? And she grows up, and they, like, raise her for, like, 13, 14 years or something like that, I think it is, while the AI girl's still around them and whatnot. And then one day, the uh, living girl kills herself for some reason. Unknown why. And the one guy's like, I know it was you, blah, blah, blah. And the AI girl's like, aren't you proud of me? Or something like that. And so... The one guy locks the AI girl in this, like, trap door under their house, and that's the end of that for a while. But uh, later, after, like, a couple more people start dying around him, he, like, drags her out and is like, did you do all this yada yada yada? And she's like, yeah, we're just getting started. And then, like, she's apparently still alive. Like, I don't know, like, if, if I were the person who had locked her in there in the first place, and I found out she caused people to kill themselves, I would have just, like, destroyed her. I don't know about y'all. That would be my action, but nope. They're, they're lived. She's still alive down there doing stuff, and uh, her, her little puppet things are still doing stuff, causing death and all that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's weird. I can't explain it, but m maybe the second season will bring some more clarity on what's happening, if there is a second season. I don't know. Uh, it ended, and uh, it was kind of weird way it did so that's why it's the last one moving on to the next one this is and i'll wait for people to unmute for a couple seconds okay this is suppose a kid from the last dungeon boonies moved to a starter town long name and not that great this was one that i was like oh man it's gonna be pretty cool but it turned out to not be cool actually um it started out okay but it suffered from the anime trope of a dense main character a main character that has no confidence in his abilities 
So it was just a huge drain on the entire show, and uh, just overall dumb nonsense from too many anime tropes, essentially. Uh, the, the plot was pretty stupid, too. Yeah, basically, the, the whole plot is about th th this kid, the brown-haired one, who's smiling there, who wants to basically get strong because he feels like he's weak, but he's not weak. That's the thing, because he came from, like, the last town, which uh, is overpowered. So he's the weakest in his village, but he's the strongest everywhere else on the goddamn planet. Uh, so, yeah, that's how that works. Um, so now I'll go into the spoiler things. Um, actually, no, hold on. It, uh, it was average. It wasn't great, it wasn't bad, but it was just average. Uh, it kind of had the harem elements, and uh, the MC was really dense, which turned me off to it uh, a little bit. But I watched it all. Um, so going into spoiler mode, I don't have much to say about it. Uh, basically, it turns out that the uh, main characters, like, not biological brother, but like, I'm your bro, bro, kind of older person, uh, is trying to make him like a hero or some shit. And there's also this bad guy who used to be a hero thousands of years ago, who was created by the elder of this village, who, like, want, needed a hero for something, and he's like, I want to die, so I gotta make myself the bad guy, so I can't be a hero, and I can fill up my purpose, and it's stupid. The plot is stupid. It'd be better if it was just a slice of life and there wasn't any plot, if it was just these characters running around doing random shit. Uh, that, that's my takeaway on it, but overall... Not very memorable. Um, definitely gonna forget about this one in a couple weeks as new stuff comes out. Uh, not even that great of waifus in it, to be honest. Um, I don't even remember their names. Nope. <laughs> I, I don't remember any of their names. So uh, that's, that's how memorable these characters are. Yep. Moving on. Up next, we have... Dr. Ramune, the Mysterious Disease Specialist. It was a pretty interesting show. It, uh, it was a cute little fun show, but all in all, it didn't stand out much. It was basically a time filler. Uh, it's, a, it's about the doctor who specializes in curing mysterious diseases, like uh, um, pot sticker earlobes, or uh, like chili fingernails, or stuff like that. Weird stuff, right? Just just weird stuff. Um, and basically, it's about him and his assistant, the uh, very sour-looking boy on the right there, uh, helping people and that kind of stuff. It, it's a very slice of life -y kind of thing like that uh, with some mysterious sci-fi. Well, not really sci-fi. It's more like mystical kind of stuff, right? Uh, but it's kind of like that. I don't really have anything spoilerish to say about it, uh, just that... I mean, it, it didn't stand out. It's definitely going to be a forgettable thing. It was a nice little kind of gagish anime, I suppose. I don't, I don't know if we're calling it gag anime. It wasn't really a comedy. It was more... It was bland. Really bland, I think. Um, so that's my takeaway from that one. So we're just going to skip the spoiler section and go to the next one, which is... The Hidden Dungeon Only I Can Enter. Ooh la la. So I was hoping this one was going to be good. Because uh, I like the medieval, like, fantasy setting thing, right? And uh, it, was, it showed promise, but it quickly, quickly just devolved into a harem anime. <laughs> yeah. Like, not even, like, a, a good harem anime. <laughs> We're talking a full-on, like, etchy harem anime. Uh, yeah. So, it was okay. I really liked the concept of the kid's magic and how you could, like, just create anything and, like, do anything, basically, as long as you had enough, like, air quotes, LP or life points to afford it. And you could get your life points up by, you know, basically uh, um, engaging in life's pleasures, like uh, eating or drinking or being lazy or, well, in this case of the show, getting sexual with the girls or, well, more precise, like seeing their panties, or having them press their boobs against you, or um, getting kisses, that kind of stuff. Uh, all, all that jazz. Uh, 
yeah, I don't know. I liked it, but I wish it was less harem and more serious and actually had a decent plot. Because the plot was just thrown out the window a couple episodes in. The, 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 main, the main plot that it seemed like was the character was like, oh, I want to get stronger, and so I'm going to become, I'm going to go to this school. He gets into the school, and then they never show, like, any classes past, like, the first episode. Like, nothing happens. And it's like, he doesn't even need to be there or anything. Um, and then he also joins the Adventurer's Guild, which you're thinking, okay, so he's going to, like, start hunting monsters and, like, doing crazy stuff like that. And it's going to be, okay, cool. Uh, no, he doesn't. He goes on a couple quests and does a couple of things. And then it's like, okay, back to the Slice of Life harem stuff. And so, yeah. And then he ends up, like, being like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to open a shop and I'm going to fill it with stuff that I get from this hidden dungeon only I can enter, and uh, that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to run with my family, and all this other stuff, and uh, that, that's all. That's literally the, the plot. It's all over the place. And, like, the last thing is, like, oh, I'm going to free my master from this dungeon. Uh, yeah, that, that's all. And none of that's really spoilerish, because, it, it, I don't know. It's, uh, man. I had high hopes, but it's going to be ranking the fourth lowest rung of the season's anime that I completed. Uh, it did have some cute characters, though. Um, drawing a blank on most of their names. Uh, I think the pink-haired elf girl's name was Alice, or like Alicia, or something like that. It started with an A, had some L's, and like I's in it. I remember that much. Other ones, I don't really remember much of their names, anyway. Uh, not to say they weren't cute. But it was just a generic harem thing, so I didn't really care too much. Moving on to the next one. Other Side Picnic. Yeah, I, uh, oof, this one was a little weird. So this was another one that was like, man, I, I gotta watch this show now. Oh, man, I thought a different show was this day. Boo. And then you watch it, and you're like, okay, this is fucking great. I love this, right? Uh, so it was weird, but it was good. But every time I thought about it, I was like, meh. But then, you know, as I said, every time I watched it, I was like, yo, this is sweet. But it was also very confusing and also very forgettable. Uh, I think the blonde-haired girl name is Teriko or Tiriko or something like that. Maybe, or maybe it started with a K, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember the other girl's name. Maybe it starts with an S, like Sak Sa Sa Sakiko? No? I don't know. But as you can see, I, I do not remember any of the girls' names. Uh, basically, the story, they go, uh, they basically go to like another dimension kind of thing. It's like a parallel world, and they explore it. Uh, the blonde-haired girl is looking for her friend or, like, master kind of thing. And the, the black-haired gal, she just kind of gets dragged along and they end up becoming friends and exploring this area. And uh, that's the long and short of it. Uh, they explore places, run into danger every episode, and they're like, oh, we, we overcome this by doing, you know, teamwork and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of a, I don't know, I'd almost say it's a slice of life, a sci-fi slice of life where the girls just kind of go to this, like, other world. Actually, it's supernatural more than sci-fi, to be honest. Yeah, I think I'm mixing up what sci-fi is. But all in all, it wasn't bad, but it was very, very forgettable. Like, if I see these characters, like, months from now, I'm not going to remember what they're from. I'm going to be like, hmm, those are, uh, those are anime characters, yep. Okay. Bye. Bye. But, uh, yeah, I don't really have much spoilery to say about it, because it wasn't that of a spoiler-ish show, I guess? I, I don't know. There wasn't, like, a main story to it or anything. Like, the main story was supposed to be them looking for her uh, master or something, or her mentor or whatnot, like I said, but uh, that doesn't really get pushed anywhere. So if you're looking for something that has a satisfying story, this ain't it, she. If you're looking for something that's kind of cool and you want to waste some time on, this was definitely good. Okay, well, moving on to our next episode. Another kind of weird one. Um, so this one is Kimono Jihen. 
and it was interesting, but kind of weird. And it gets a little fucked up around the middle. Yeah. And I'll tell you why in the spoilers about why this gets fucked up. And the part that made me a little uncomfortable and I did not like at all. And uh, we're going to go from there. Uh, but it's cute at times, crazy other times. Had some good, like, action-y moments, which was kind of cool. But then it kind of petered off towards the end, I feel. Uh, anyway, it's about basically the these characters here, uh, minus the blonde-haired girl on the left, in the upper left there. Uh, essentially, all of them have family issues, and they're all these uh, these like half demon, half human kids, right? And so they're taken in by this guy on the upper, uh, basically up up in the middle. Uh, he's like a uh, da, 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 a, a key monoist or something like that, which is like the people who keep the peace between humans and the the kimono uh, people, kind of like that. Or he like solves mysteries or crimes and stuff like that that they do. Essentially, I think I, I kind of don't remember exactly what he said his job title was. But anyway, um, they go and solve crimes basically is what happens and there's stories about them getting their family and investigating all that stuff and uh, stuff like that uh, they run into demons they fight demons they uh, help arrest or kill demons depending upon what it is so there is some like good action and violence like I said pretty cool uh, but yeah it, it was definitely one that's gonna be forgettable to me it, it did not stand out like very much at all um, it could use a second season. I would watch it. it. It was entertaining for when I did watch it. It was pretty cool. But uh, mm, definitely not anything to, to write home about. Let me tell you that much. All right. Let me go on to the spoiler section of it because I want to talk about it a little more. Okay. So mute if you do not want to hear spoilers on it. And as last time, once the next uh, picture shows up, you can unmute. All right. So I hope you're muted because here we go. So, shit got a little real around the time when we, uh, when, when the middle kind of pink haired character named Shiki, who is the first character I can like really remember the name of, other than the, the Dr. Ramune guy, who, uh, cause his name's the actual fucking show. Uh, but anyway, Shiki, he gains confidence and he's like, I want to find my, my mother and yada yada. So they go to this other town. And they talk to his uncle, I think it was. And his uncle is like this really, he's like a scientist researcher kind of guy. Kind of. It's weird. It's complicated. And uh, he basically tells Shiki, oh yeah, your mom and your dad are dead. Flat out. Just, they're dead. They died. Uh, there was an accident. Uh, I, I saved you or whatnot. Like, uh, your mother tried to save you and she ended up dying. Yada, yada, yada. And that's why I took you in. I didn't want to tell you because you were young and now it's time for you to learn the truth. Yada, yada, whatever. Lies. All lies. Okay. So, we find out later, and this is really fucked, okay? So, we find out that while Shiki was a kid, his father either died in an accident or what's more likely to have happened is Shiki's uncle pushed him off a fucking cliff and killed him, okay? Because Shiki's uncle is a guy who's like, I want my name known all over the world. I want to be remembered, yada, yada, yada. And to do this, he's following this urban legend of this, like, uh, golden, like, spider silk that can, like, heal any injury and, like, do crazy magical stuff. And uh, it turns out it's this, like, uh, spider demon who Shiki's dad married, right? Uh, so... What really, really starts getting fucked up is after his father dies, Shiki's uncle takes in the two, and in order for him to be like, yeah, I'll take you in, but you gotta help me, he says to Shiki's mother. And so Shiki's mother would be like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll help you as long as you keep, you know, my son safe, yada, yada, yada. And so, so begins... What is probably years of, like, rape, 
straight up just fucking rape nonsense crazy fucking horrible horrible shit so basically there's this shed out in the middle of nowhere and then there's this uh, uh, apparently they've been like I don't know if they're artificially inseminating Shiki's mother or if they're like actually getting demons to like fuck her but Shiki's uncle basically made a bunch of demons different demons fuck Shiki's mother to spit out babies to see if they would have the rare unique spider silk thing and when these kids show up they're actually ambushed by a bunch of Shigi's half siblings yes and they're all like mindless drolls except for one girl who uh, they later save and whatnot but there's like dozens of them so Shigi's mother was raped and gave birth dozens of times in that place and Shiki was traumatized by this he, he followed his mother one day to the shack saw her getting just fucking raped I'm guessing and then he like his, his uncle came behind him and smashed him in the head with a rock knocked him out and took him home and then his uh, uncle was like oh yeah you, you, you were attacked and I, I saved you yada yada you saw something pretty fucked up and you, your mother died yep and so then Shiki's uncle just locked Shiki's mother up in that fucking shack and continued to just have things rape her to uh, spit out babies. Really fucked up. Uh, so at that point I was like, bruh, bruh. And we didn't get a conclusion until next week. So I was pissed for like a week. I was like, how are you going to fucking do this? You motherfuckers. Um, and the good thing is, the guy dies. Shiki's uncle dies. He gets fucking incinerated. All of his work goes up in smoke. It's perfect. And the, the another good thing is Shiki's mother's not actually dead. She was just, like, tied up at the bottom of a lake by uh, Shiki's half-sister, who was actually an intelligent uh, one that was kind of spit out. Uh -huh. And she, her, his sister is the golden silk-wielding one. And uh, they kind of go from there. Uh, really, really fucked up like really fucked up like ah I do not like that that's not okay like before that it was like oh yeah you know like my uh, my like, I was attacked by things or I was like or, or they're sucking like things brains out because they're mosquito demon things uh, and then it just goes like okay yeah straight up rape like hundreds of times just just rape this woman and make her have kids a bunch you know like what what right um the rest of the story is pretty much uneventful uh the the white-haired kid on the right uh he's looking for his brother his brother shows up he's like possessed by the soul stone they beat him up the story ends there that's uh that's how that goes and that's where uh the season ends so you don't even get the the satisfaction of the main character the black-haired guy with the blue eyes you don't even or not the blue eyes the red eyes finding his parents or anything yet so uh yeah anyway moving on from the rapiness welcome back everyone damn you really missed nothing good in that discussion i just want you to know that well welcome to log horizon baby all right log horizon i loved this show and it was an okay season but but and let me say but again but okay the beginning is boring as hell in this series on oh, this season the season was boring as hell it was just politics and for as much as they hyped it up about the destruction of the round table uh, it's, blah. like, the first, I think, ten episodes was rather boring, if I'm remembering correctly for, uh, where things ended, but most of it is just talking, politics, dialogue, very little, like, actual combat, or, like, MMO-type action stuff, right? 
and a lot of it could have just not happened like all that happens in the first like 10 episodes is essentially the round table has a dispute because one of their members is gone he used to keep the peace and now they're all like rah, 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 rah. we need more power rah, 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 rah. and then one of the guys is like oh, i don't i don't like how i'm treated here i'm going to rah, 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 rah. and then the one guy sides with um another faction and becomes like a duke or a baron or some shit and then they hold an election to determine if they're going to hand over power to the duke guy whose name i even forget because he's such a background fucking character hasn't really done anything in the series um or if the round table will like reorganize and take over again and so that's why it's called the destruction of the round table because the round table goes bye bye and it's replaced by you guessed it the new round table <sighs> yeah i feel like that's not even spoilers because that doesn't even matter for the story because it's business as usual before and after that the only thing the only thing or i guess there's two things that this whole thing drove home is it uh gave that guy something to do and got him out of the main town because he went back and with other with the other guy whose faction he sided with and it gave princess renesia i think was her name I, her name is like just too long <laughs> i can't remember it I, I know her though she's very noticeable and like i can remember her but i just can't remember her name it's like renesia i think though um, but anyway, it basically made her stop being, like, uh, a second seat character, kind of, and brought her more to the forefront of, like, hey, I'm going to abandon, like, my royal name and take shit over. Or, and, like, help. I'm going to dedicate more of myself to uh, Akiba and, you know, the, the adventurers and the people of the land here, and I'm not going to, you know, be bound by my royal duties and all that kind of stuff yada yada uh, the turning point of it really comes when we move the focus from akiba to wherever the hell crusty is at yes so we get to see more of crusty and where he went and it gets full of uh action and combat and it just spikes up in interest uh from there uh it, it is it's great so i'm gonna switch over to the spoiler section even though there was a couple spoilers here but nothing too major but the next section is going to be rife because i just want to gush about how this last couple of episodes have gone because it's been amazing so mute your stream it's not a stream mute your uh, you mute your video if you don't want to hear it so the, the last bit of log horizons third season here third or fourth season i don't know this season um we're amazing oh my god so there's a uh, this genius like npc or player it doesn't i'm kind of confused on what it is exactly but it basically makes the entirety of akiba a raid and all the adventurers get teleported into this huge raid right however it's a level 65 creature and i think the max level cap right now for them is like 80 so what happens is all the overpowered strong characters like shiro and uh akatsuki well not akatsuki um the other ones everyone else who's like a high level op have much much raid experience under the belt they all get their levels reduced to like 45 so they're just getting shit on by like trash mobs right and they die they just die and they go to uh after you die you apparently resurrect into real world akiba which is like a, a non-instance akiba one but uh the other characters like the, the lower level ones who are only level like 65 ish like minori and uh all the other members of log horizon who are not the overpowered ones along with some other characters as well uh don't have their levels reduced because they were meant for the instance or something and also akatsuki because she was in mentor mode which lowered her level and basically it is the uh, like m maturation like the the characters mature is what i'm trying to say of a number of characters and namely minori uh the the little like the plain little priestess girl who follows around shiro because he uh she likes her she she likes him that and uh, another a number of other the minor characters as well uh so basically 
they go in and do a raid. They fight against the, the genius and they win. And they break the instance and everyone's levels return back to normal and all that good stuff. Um, it's a really, really great battle and like how the stuff was done, I liked it. It was great. That's all I wanted to say. It was cool. I liked it. Definitely check it out. Like maybe, maybe just skip like the first couple episodes at the beginning of Log Horizon Season 2 if you don't care about the politics. And if you want to see some cool stuff, just like jump in a little. Actually, you know what? You could literally skip the first like part of this season of Log Horizon and you would not miss out on anything important in the second half. Like nothing ties in from the first half to like the second half. As soon as you get like the, the crusty backstory of where he's been this whole time, nothing from that point forward is affected by anything that happened past. So it's like, okay, uh, it's kind of great. Uh, but yeah, so with that in mind, let's go on to the next one. Okay. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we have Dr. Stone's second season. Now, this one was pretty decent, pretty good. That's why it's um, number eight uh, from the bottom tier going up. It's what is it? It'd be 10th then? Is it my 10th favorite of this one? I think? Question mark? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, basically it's the same thing you love from the previous Dr. Stone, but now they're doing the, the whole battle thing, or well, they're working towards the battle still a little bit. Um, however, one thing that it's lacking from the previous season is a lot of the detail about how to like make things and how things progress is just taken out. It's just like, okay, we're not gonna do this whole drawn out plan of how to make like paper or how to make this, uh, this uh, medicine, yada, yada. We're just gonna be like, okay, we need these materials. Okay, we got them. Okay, let's build it. And it's not like a step-by-step -step process of how to like really do much. It's not very detailed in that regard. There's more story and less uh, planning. I feel, you know what I'm saying? Which is not a bad thing. It was still pretty good. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if there's gonna be a third season. It, it didn't, oh no, yeah, it definitely set up for a third season. I'm not gonna talk about it and I'm not gonna spoil anything in this uh, section. I'm not even gonna do a spoil section on it because I don't really have much to say about it, but it sets up for a third season, but I don't know what the heck's the ha gonna happen in the third season. It's gonna be interesting to say at the least, if there is one. So, yeah. Okay. Moving on. Let's go to the next one. Bottom tier character Tomozaki. This one was actually pretty decent. It, uh... My, my note says literally pretty decent underneath it. Uh, it was kind of interesting. Uh, there were some drama elements near the end that got kind of aggravating to me, in my opinion. Uh, nothing too major, but it is just like a, a romance comedy kind of show. I, I don't. I, I would say it's barely romance. Um, it, it's a stretch to say it's romance. It's more slice of life than anything, uh, because, well, let's uh, yeah, well, let's just say. It's barely romance, and uh, there, there wasn't too much crazy, like, romance drama going on, but it was still some drama that was annoying, and regardless. Okay, let's go into the spoiler section for this one. So if you don't want spoilers, mute until the next image comes up, and we'll go from there. <clears throat> okay, spoilerinos. So, when I say it's not romance... I mean, basically, the romance in this show boils down to two side characters getting pushed together and Tomozaki basically getting pushed to this girl who he doesn't really have any interest in at first, and it's still up in the air as of the ending of whether or not he does actually like her or if it's still just like, hey, you're a cool person, let's hang out. Um, and it's also not clear if he likes the, uh, the main girl either, 
who uh, is, has been helping him try to like be a player of the game of life kind of thing. Because uh, it's like, he kind of seems to like her, but also kind of not, because he still seems to be like entertaining this other girl, but I can't tell if that's just because he's doing stuff to like do stuff, or I, I don't know. It's weird. But anyway, so the main character and the girl on the far right basically have a falling out at the end, which like pisses me off because she like doesn't listen to reason at first. And so Tomozaki just kind of like does his thing for a while, uh, has a chat with the uh, girl he's air quotes dating, but they're not officially dating, dating. Um, and then ends up talking to her and being like, you know what? I know what I want from life, but what do you want? You're just wearing a mask the whole time. I can prove to you that things such as desires exist. And she's like, okay, so let's prove it, motherfucker. And uh, they end up being on good terms again, and they're going to basically teach each other. Uh, Tomozaki's going to be teaching her how to like have desires and stuff like that. And she's going to be teaching him how to continue to be a player of the game of life. Uh, yeah. I liked it for the most part, but the ending was bad. So yeah. Moving on. All right, everyone. Hello, welcome back. I, I want to add real quick for those of you who might have muted uh, the Tomozaki bottom tier one. Uh, it was good, but the ending was kind of bad. Yeah, that that's all I wanted to add there. Um, I enjoyed the the thing of it. Anyway, moving on to reincarnated as a slimes. The the, the sec the I don't know, season the season that this one was in. Okay, it was really great, like really great. At first, the first, like, episode or two I did not like. It was, uh, kind of boring, because it was just, like, politics, like Log Horizons. But thankfully, Reincarnated as a Slime moved past that really quickly. And got really fucking good at the last bit. Oh my god, did it get fucking good! Ah, man. So, whoo. Like, you see stuff happen to people and you get upset by it and then the people who caused you to get upset get fucking punished it is so satisfying i love it and there's just some stuff that you'll never see coming both good and bad that just like oh my god so we're gonna go into the spoiler section of this now so i can tell you about it yeah moving on okay spoiler boys and gals and everyone else in between Oh my god. So, Rimuru's town gets attacked and a bunch of people die. Because the human empire and this church are like, fuck monsters, they're messing up our trade routes, let's fucking get them boys. And so they set up a barrier within a barrier and basically trap and weaken all the monsters inside. Meanwhile, Rimuru's away, he's coming back from his teacher duties. And he gets ambushed by a, like, holy paladin cleric gal who uh, also traps him in a barrier to weaken him. But he still goes, like, pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe and uh, managed to manage to get out of it alive uh, with him, with her thinking he's dead. Uh, so he goes back, finds his city uh, having been damaged and partially destroyed, and a number of his friends and villagers dead, um, including Xion, who uh, is basically his secretary, the uh, the Oni demon with huge fucking tits that uh, always hang out of her shirt. Um, and so, he's mad. He is fucking mad, right? And he, he's about to fucking lose his mind and kick some people's asses and some stuff's revealed, yada, 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 yada. And basically, he ends up being like, okay, everyone, so, I used to be a human in my past life, and I've always thought of myself as human. However, seeing what these humans did, I don't think I can be anymore. I'm out. I'm actually a fucking monster, and opinions. What do we want to do about humans? Do we want to continue to try and coexist with them? 
Do we want to fucking murder them all? What do we want to do? And so there's some back and forth, yada, yada, yada. And they're basically going to do business as usual, but be a little more cautious, right? Because Rimuru had this rule of uh, don't harm humans, but now he's like, let's just throw that one away. Uh, you can do what you need to if you have to, you know, protect yourselves and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so, someone brings up a rumor about how to revive dead people. And apparently, you have to become a demon lord in order to have the power to do this. And to become a demon lord, you have to murder thousands of humans. Thousands. Like, I think it's like 10,000 or 20,000 or something. It's a bunch. And so Rimuru's like, all right, let's do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with a fucking demon lord. I'm gonna get revenge on the people who died here. And then uh, I'm gonna become a demon lord and revive them, you know? And so the motherfucker does it. Oh my God. So he sets it up to have his underlings who are still able to fight uh, exit the barrier and attack the, uh, the people who are keeping them in and weakening them. And so they destroy those camps while Rimuru heads to the giant army of like, I think it's like 30,000 uh, humans who are coming to attack and wipe out the city including the king of the uh, kingdom that attacked him. So he goes there by himself. The other ones knock out the crystals, destroy the barrier, but uh, um, not Shion, uh, the, the pink-haired Oni girl who I don't remember the name of because she doesn't get mentioned much. Um, I thought her name started with a Y. Is it, is it Yuki or Yui or something? I, I don't forget, I'm sorry. Um, she's a cutie though. Uh, Anyway, she and another gal who shows up, um, who turns out to be a, a, a magi or something like that, they put up their own barrier to keep the souls of the dead inside, or at least that's what they're planning on, thinking and trying to do. Um, so after the barrier goes down, Rimuru is out there, over the camp of the, the like 30,000 soldiers, just flying overhead, he puts on his mask, he creates an anti-magic barrier around the entire camp, just like they did to him and his uh, city. And then he gets revenge. He uses this badass ability that basically sends out like slime bolts from way up high, like instantly and like very fast to other little slime orbs that are near the ground and basically just starts like piercing people's heads. Like they just instantly die, like dead, 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 dead. Like, in a matter of seconds, he's killed thousands, right? And meanwhile, the uh, the sage or whatever his head voice thing is that keeps giving the total, it's like 2,000 have died, like 5,000 have died, 10,000 have died, et cetera, et cetera. Then, next episode, <laughs> because they, of course they had to end it on a cliffhanger before he gets all the kills, um, he keeps killing everyone. Everyone in the camp dies. Like, everyone. I think he killed, like, all 30,000 of them. And he kills two main people, like this uh, captain of the guard who was like, I'm going to launch an offensive. I will rally the troops and we'll make human shields and go. And then he's like, he walks out of the tent and then, boop, right through the head. It's hilarious. And then uh, the other guy, the magi guy, or the magic guy, who's like, I am a superior sorcerer, ha, 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 also gets shot through the head. But he apparently lived somehow, which pisses me off. Although he's a prisoner now, which is good. Um, so anyway, so Rimuru finds the king and like the, the archbishop or whatever who's with him of the church and is like, all your people are dead. Um, I want to take you hostage or I'm going to take you for like reasons uh, that uh, weren't really disclosed or whatever. Um, and they're like begging and pleading and yada, yada, yada. And Rimuru just straight up fucking like murders the bishop who's like, I'll give you money. I'll tell the church that, you know, you're, you're good, that we can ignore you monsters and stuff like that. And he just murders him, gaining him the, uh, the title of merciless or something like that, like a merciless ability, which basically says that anyone who has lost the will to fight um, will instantly die. <laughs> that's, that's how that goes. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, there were still some people left alive 
um, before he got the merciless talent. But when he got it, he used it and killed everyone else, except for the king. And uh, no, no, I think he kept the king and bishop alive. He killed someone else to get merciless. I think. I'm sorry, I'm misremembering exactly because it was just so hype, and I was like, oh my god, it's Pog. But anyway, so after killing that many people, he gets the rights to evolve into a demon lord. So he does so, and Ranga um, takes the two guys and takes them back to town along with Rimuru. But before that, Rimuru summons um, like three demons, sacrificing the souls and bodies of the people he killed. And they uh, look for this one guy who's still alive, which happened to be the sorcerer. And they really quickly capture him after like basically just slapping him around a bunch. <laughs> it's hilarious. And then uh, Rimuru gets back to town and he ends up like evolving and passing out for uh, a little bit and then once he becomes a demon he's like insanely powerful like a total mood shift of how shit goes and uh he ends up bringing back all of the uh all of his townspeople including Shion, uh by sacrificing two of the demons he had summoned earlier and using their power to do that so uh very cool and then from there we learn that the demon lord milium fought with the uh demon lord i forget his name that they're allied with of uh, the beast kingdom guy and apparently they maybe kidnapped the beast kingdom guy because they're all working for clayman for some reason and so the demon lord clayman is going to become a target in the next season or whatever's going to happen um so i'm looking forward to that Long with an explanation, I know. I'm going to take a drink real quick and we'll continue. Ah. Okay. All in all, great. Moving on. Uh, okay. So, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome back. Reincarnated as a slime. Great show. Great show. Ending was beautiful and I look forward to more. But, now we're talking about ReZero, the uh, third season, or whatever the hell we're on at this point. So, the first couple of loops of Subaru dying in this one are really repetitive. Um, it's, it started off pretty meh, but it actually got really, really good at times. Uh, there were some that were still kind of like meh, really. We got a lot more backstory and stuff happening. A lot of character development for, uh, like, Beatrice, for uh, Amelia... Subaru himself, as always, just getting a lot. Um, Otto and Gar got a lot of development. Ram got a little bit of development, but barely any because, of course, no one cares about the flat-chested girls unless they're completely flat-chested like Beatrice because that's just how the, the world works. So Ram is forever just in the purgatory of underdeveloped character because no one like, gives a shit. Like, it felt like what they did with Ram was like an afterthought like oh we haven't done anything with Ram's character yet let's just let's just do this this completely batshit thing that makes no sense whatsoever and uh we'll we'll do that so that's that's what ended up happening there but basically the entire season takes place in the sanctuary where uh Amelia has to go through the trials and Subaru has to try and protect both the manor and the sanctuary so that they don't get destroyed and completely murdered. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much how it went. I liked it. I look forward to more. I'm hoping in the next uh, next season, perhaps, it's a little bit great. We also found a lot, like I'm talking a lot, of new waifus in this episode or this season because of like the seven, I guess. Technically, the six new witches, because we didn't really see the Witch of Sloth or Envy. I forget which one it is. Uh, the one that gave Subaru his powers, essentially. Whichever witch that was, we didn't really see. We kind of saw her, but it's also kind of implied that she's someone else. But uh, I'll get into that in the spoiler section. Anyway, it was great. I enjoyed it. And, uh... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's season two, part two. That's why it felt like a three to me, because it was like, oh, let's break up season switch. Oh, my God. 
before we go into the spoiler section, can I just say, because fucking ReZero is not the only one doing this right now. Attack on Titan is doing it too. Um, they're splitting up seasons into two seasons, but technically it's the same season. <laughs> and there's a couple others that have done that too that I've watched and it pissed me off. It's like, oh, hey, this is season two, but we're going to do one season of season two and then the second season of season two will come out like a year later. Don't worry. Wink. And then it's just annoying as fuck. Um, I hate that. If you're going to fucking make a show that you know is going to have like story impact and like important shit and people are actually going to like it, like ReZero, which you know, people clearly like, then make the fucking thing back to back for God's sake. We don't need these like season long breaks or year breaks in some cases. Meanwhile, you have shitty shows like fucking, like fucking King's Raid getting a fucking full season, right? All back to back. No breaks in between that fucking 26 episode bullshit. Okay, rant over. Moving on to the spoiler section. So mute your streams, do what you need, or mute your, your video, all that good jazz. Because we are getting into the long and short of it. All right. Sorry, I looked away for a second and my, uh, my tracking went off. <clears throat> anyway, so spoilers for this one. Uh, basically, Ram loves... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Fuck, his, his name, his name. Uh, Roswell? Ro Wild? Rosewell? Whoever the fuck the clown guy is, the clown makeup guy, Roswald or Roswell, whatever the fuck his name is. I remember it starts with an R and ends with like an L. But uh, apparently Ram loves him. Like, okay, that's her character development. That's all that is. Nothing important there. And uh, it's basically, I'm 100% certain it's Stockholm Syndrome since she was kidnapped by him as well and all that good shit. But, you know, whatever. We also learn... That Rosewall, or the fuck his name is, is like apparently an underling of the Witch of Greed, Echidna. And uh, they like knew each other back when Echidna was like still alive, air quotes. And apparently, Rosewall, Beatrice, uh, Echidna, the Witch of Greed, and. Ryza? The, the little lowly baba, the, the pink-haired lowly girl, uh, who's actually like an old lady, because whatever, um, they all knew each other back in the back in the day and made the sanctuary, essentially. And uh, it was interesting to see all that kind of happen. Um, so we learned a lot about Beatrice and that kind of stuff there. We also learned a lot about Echidna. I guess not really a lot. We, we learned what she kind of was and did. We learned a whole bunch about Amelia's past um, in terms of uh, how she was frozen, uh, what happened to her back then. We got her more confident and determined to do what she needs to do to see the future she wants, basically. And we also found Subaru not relying on his return from death ability. So now he's actually trying to uh, think things out and work with his fucking friends finally, being like, Hey guys, something bad's gonna happen. I need your help to help me find this out, okay? Something bad's gonna happen. I need your help to help me fix it, which you should have been doing the whole fucking time. This is why the whole I know the future thing pisses me off in shows. Because these motherfuckers, these guys who do this, they never are like, okay, guys, by the way, I have a feeling something bad's gonna happen here, so would you all help me and, like, avoid that? And so they're like, I will do this all by myself. Yeah. I will try and change the outcome myself without relying on anyone. And so this arc is about Subaru learning to actually rely on people and all that good jazz. And uh, we learn about the witches of, like, greed, gluttony, lust, all that good stuff, and they're all, of course, cute waifus um, that you find out, and all that. And uh, we also get Frederica, the uh, sister of Gar, who is a cute uh, maid gal. 
she's great too and uh yeah and uh, basically it culminates with subaru breaking beatrice out of her library and forging a pact with her and destroying the white rabbits that are trying to kill everyone or the, the mob beast and uh, well they don't kill her uh, beatrice ends up like just teleporting them to another dimension well they'll never be seen or heard from again and uh, uh amelia helps out with it as well while they protect all the citizens who were in the sanctuary so it's a win 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 for everyone pretty great i uh, i liked how it turned out i'm a little dissatisfied that the whole story the whole season uh both part one and two seem to revolve around the sanctuary there was a lot of information but hopefully now they can go forward with other stuff yeah <laughs> moving on welcome welcome everyone back to attack on titan now this season is kind of weird i had no idea at the beginning there was a time skip there was just a time skip that occurred i think it's like 10 or like 20 years or something like that and like all the characters are older now and new characters are like showing up and shit like that it, it's weird like the whole thing starts out with like you don't even see the main cast for like the first like five episodes i think and then after that it switches back to them and then at, at times i feel like it's still like at times it's in the past but then again it's in the future at times it's, it's kind of confusing like I, I couldn't really pick out what was like a flashback to what happened previous versus what was like currently happening at times yeah, but anyway uh the, the best part of it i have to say is that aaron is no longer fucking crying or screaming every goddamn five seconds instead he's quiet he's actually fucking quiet he says what he needs to he talks like this really like mature and composed and doesn't really get angry at people it's great it's fucking great it is the best thing that could have happened to attack on titan is for aaron to shut the fuck up and not be a bitch <sighs> but as i had mentioned in the re-zero thing the rant attack on titan the final season isn't the final season because it got split up into two which the actual final season is going to be released in apparently winter of 2022 so we've got over a year to wait <sighs> what a pain in the ass i'm not even going to deal with doing a spoiler thing on this there was some great stuff and if you've been keeping up with it at all you have definitely heard about the stuff that pissed off a lot of people especially the one death early on that pissed off a lot of people other than that it's been great i'm still upset by that one death though they uh they killed off arguably the best character the best character man all right moving on jujutsu kaisen coming in at a strong one two three four five six coming in at sixth place of my total countdown it's been really great um it, it it's honestly been amazing i was not expecting much from it but it has become arguably the best show it's definitely better than attack on titan it's nonsense hell i think it's it's pretty good in terms of setting it on equal footing with like bleach and naruto and one piece in terms of like good shonen anime it's like got a good plot good characters like oof good shit yeah it's uh it has great combat when they're fighting it's got a good story and all that i, I don't really want to say much more about spoilers because it's such a good show that i don't want to ruin any of it for anyone even if you want spoilers i don't want to ruin it for you because it's just that great moving on to the next one we have hori mia it's called hori mia because of hori the girl and uh miyamura the guy it's the romance of them uh, it's very great it is arguably my favorite romance 
um, with a few exceptions of shows that actually aren't romance romance. Um, I, I would still honestly say Angel Beats is a really good romance uh, in terms of how things end up, but uh, in terms of just strictly romance, because Angel Beats is not really a romance, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Hori Mia is definitely a great one. Um, there's so, so little drama in this entire show, and none of the drama surrounds the main characters. It is such a weight off my shoulders to not have to deal with drama between the main characters. And, like, they end up together right away. Like, within, like, the first three episodes, they're like, okay, let's date. It's great. <clears throat> it is great. So, essentially, it's just a slice of life between, like, a, a couple, a high school couple. But it's great. It is. It is so cute. Almost painfully cute, I would say. Because they're just adorable together. And I, I absolutely loved it. it it's one of the few like sh anime that I own the manga to like <laughs> I don't have the complete manga but I have some of it uh, because I kind of stopped reading things in real life like physical pages because I hate paper uh, so I stopped I didn't buy the rest of them but I have like the first like five manga I think and uh, I loved it so when I saw this one come out and I didn't realize it and I was like wait <gasps> what is that no Hori Mia? Yeah, boy. So I uh, definitely watched it, definitely loved it, and uh, man, if there weren't so, if there weren't four other great shows in front of this one, this one would have been my favorite. Uh, in terms of genre, though, because there's like three uh, that are coming up that are all kind of the same genre, the uh, the fantasy, uh, middle evil kind of you know, stuff like that. But uh, in terms of genre, this one is definitely number one in romance. Uh, it's great. So I just wanna, I wanna talk about, I just wanna talk about a little bit of spoilery stuff. So if, if you want to not hear that, mute now please, because oh my God, I just wanna gush over the show for a little bit longer, okay? Okay. Welcome to Spoiler Chat, boys. So, Hori Mia is, I just love the two characters just being together and like macking on each other <laughs> like just just fucking being cute together from like their first meeting to uh near the end where hori is concerned about after graduation them separating and whatnot and miyamura just like without skipping a beat is like let's get married it's like great and the fact that there's, there's no drama between them because very early on, they're like, oh, yeah, we're dating. Even though there's a little confusion because of their, like, feelings towards each other at the beginning. They're like, I don't know, if, you know, she loves me. I don't know if he loves me kind of thing. You know, the stuff that happens, like, throughout the entire season of normal romance anime? Nah, not this one. This one's like, hey, let's date, baby. And so they date. And the, the main drama revolves around side characters where, uh, I forget their names exactly. Uh, I forget a lot of like normal Japanese names, but if it comes to like Alice, I can remember that, right? Uh, because it's like Tamikura or stuff like that. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how to remember them very well. Anyway, there's kind of like a little love triangle going on uh, between the other side characters, and it's like, dude, just like, come on, come on, come on. But uh, the, the way the other side character love triangle goes, I, I, I'm not satisfied by it because it's uh, the green-haired girl loves the purple-haired guy, and the purple-haired guy likes the, uh, the kind of yellowy blonde girl. And so r green hair asks out purple. Purple's like, sorry, I like yellow. And then yellow's like, I also like purple. But yellow and purple don't, like, they don't go together. Like, they don't date. They're just like, yeah, we just like spending time together. But we're not, like, going to date. We just, like, like this current thing. It's like, motherfuckers, just date. What? Yeah. 
other than that, everything's adorable. Everything's cute. The animation's nice. It's ah, oh, ah, oh, so good. I uh, I love it. I uh, I'm fuck. I'm gonna buy it on DVD. I'm gonna hundred percent buy this on DVD. Let's uh, let's get to get out of spoilers because uh, I want to say that to everyone else. I want to fucking buy this on DVD. Hi, hi, welcome. So I just I just said something in the spoiler thing that I thought all of you should hear. I want to buy Hori Me on DVD. Yeah, I'm gonna buy that motherfucker on DVD or like Blu-ray, whichever you know. But uh, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna own that motherfucker, so I always have it, so I don't have to worry about streaming sites and stuff like that. I'm gonna get it because it was just that great. Yeah. Anyway, moving on to the next one, number four in my uh, top group here, we have Jobless Reincarnation. It was amazing. It was hilarious. It had fun magic and combat. It was just fun times all around. Um, my God. So it starts out with the main character like getting birthed, basically, uh, and whatnot. Because uh, apparently his real body, and it's it's kind of spoilers for how he died because it happens in a later episode, but no one really cares about how the Isekai character dies, okay? It's not important. He, uh, he was a fat otaku who apparently got bullied a lot, and um, he quit school and just started, like, being uh, neat in his parents' house. His parents died, apparently, or something, and then his, like, siblings or something kick him out of the house. So he, like, roams down the road and saves this group of p kids. I think it's, like... Uh, kids are a couple from like a truck and dies by the truck truck coon claimed another soul yep -er -yo. so then he gets reborn and uh <clears throat> he's of course since he's a horny 30 year old man in a infant's body he thinks horny 30 year old man things while in an infant's body like uh thinking his mother's hot or being like damn my mother has nice tits she like that um there's one part where I think he's like, man, I am so lucky to be able to suck on this hot woman's tits. But sadly, I don't feel any arousal from it because she's my mom or something like that. Something weird like that. And then he also, like, has an obsession with, like, panties and stealing panties as a toddler once he starts to learn to crawl and stuff like that. And uh, it's funny because the maid is like, he's a demon. He's a fucking demon. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, anyway, he grows up learns magic and uh yeah it, it's, it's great it's about him learning magic and be deciding that he wants to actually be something in this world instead of being a jobless loser his whole life again um so he actually dedicates himself to learning magic and all that and uh yeah he, he meets a friend the, the green-haired uh, folk there and his master of magic, which is a uh, Roxy, which I actually I pre-ordered a figure of Roxy because Roxy is one of the best waifus this season. Actually, arguably she's the best waifu this season. Yeah, Roxy is a good one. Actually, this one, all three of these waifus you see on the screen right now, they're good waifus. We have Roxy, Sylphie, and uh, oh my god, I forgot her name, the red-haired one. Uh, oh my god. Ah. Uh, oh no. Oh no. There's a fourth. And a fifth? And a sixth? And a seventh waifu? <laughs> this show is just plumb full of good looking women. Um, from his mother, to their maid, to the three girls you see on the screen there. And then there's the red haired girl's mother, who is a total MILF. Not to mention all the cat or all the animal person maids that the red-haired girl's family has. And also this, like, animal warrior lady who's, like, a very strong, very hot, has fucking abs, like, woman who is, like, hot as fuck. I think her name's, like, it starts with a G. It's, like, Grizz Grizzlene or something like that. I can't, I can't pronounce it properly. Uh... But great waifus in this season. This is probably the number one 
anime for good waifus this season. I'm throwing it out there right now. Yep. In terms of personality and, and looks, uh, definitely that one. There is some other ones that have some good, cute waifus, but their personalities aren't that great. And the anime they're from are probably the best that you want to associate with if you're like, I like waifus. But yeah. Um, it has great combat, great magic casting, a great story uh, that you, you know, kind of get. And I really, really cannot wait until the next season comes out. If they make the next season. This show needs one. If King's Raid can get a fucking second season, or get two seasons worth of episodes, this one, that one has to get another episode. Another season. Come on. Come on. Give me it. I need it. Anyway. I don't want to talk about spoilers in this one because I like it so much. Moving on to the next one. It's the one, the only, redo of Healer. This was one of the most hyped anime for me this season. And that's why it is number four, because it lived up to its expectations, but... It did not surpass expectations. In fact, it fell a little, little short of expectations, so I don't I guess it didn't actually meet them. But it was good. I enjoyed it. Oh yeah. There's gonna be people out there who are like, oh wow, you liked Redo of Healer? What the fuck is wrong with you? Didn't you see all the crazy shit? The main character's a piece of crap. Yada yada yada. Wow, cancel this anime. It's definitely not getting a second season, I can tell you that much. Unless. There's a CEO of some anime company out there that's like, yes, yes, <laughs> make a second season, I want more, because I would definitely do that if I were an anime CEO who was like, hey, hook this show up another season, yeah, because everyone in it is a piece of shit, with few exceptions, oh my god. The main character gets betrayed in his first life because he's a healer and the other heroes treat him like shit. The kingdom treats him like shit. Everyone treats him like shit. He is like fucking raped. He is beaten. He is just drugged. Like the whole whole first episode covers this stuff. Like it covers the first like life that he lived. And basically at the end of his first life, he snaps out of it. He gets resistant to the drugs. He learns that his healing abilities are actually fucking amazing because it teaches him everything that the person knew and he can do crazy stuff with his body and all that kind of stuff. And so he waits until the heroes are fighting the demon lord and are about to die and he lets them die. And then he takes the Philosopher's Stone from the demon lord, having defeated her single-handedly, and uses it to turn back time and give himself his memories, essentially. Uh, he actually goes to a pond and gets like a like an eye of like revealing or something like that that lets him like look at people and determine their strength and abilities and he uses that on himself to unlock his memories and he's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get revenge. And so he lives his life um, going for revenge. And the second episode is all about him, like, eating mushrooms that are, like, toxic and drug him uh, just so he can build up a resistance to drugs. And then, so that way, when he eventually does get drugged by the other heroes, he has more resistance and he can actually fight back and get his revenge. Uh, it's great. It has actual sex scenes. There's a lot of rape in it. There's, um, it's very, it's a very crude and, like, if you're easily triggered or offended by stuff, this is not the show for you. Definitely not. Don't don't watch this show. But if you like revenge or seeing the main character get revenge on shitty people or just seeing bad people just get fucked regardless, like, this is the show for you. This is the show for you. Now, going to the spoiler section. So go ahead and mute, and I'm going to take a drink while I wait for you to mute, and we'll go on. I hope you're muted. Okay. So, this fucking anime right here. I love it. I, uh, I even waited extra time for the uncensored versions to come out 
so I could watch them. Uh, because there, there's sex scenes. It's like a hentai, basically. Um, and it, uh, the, the, the normal uncensored, the censored anime basically it just pans away and looks at a wall for a while. And I was like, you know what? If I'm going to watch this fucking show, I'm going to actually see what's going on. I'm not going to look at a wall for like a couple minutes each episode. That's not cool. Um, so basically, main character gets drugged, but he snaps out of it a lot sooner. He steals people's abilities by healing them. And then <clears throat> breaks into the princess's room, who the princess is the hero of magic, who uh, basically uh, treated him like shit, drugged him, and used him as a slave. And he uh, basically, uh, like, destroys the tendons in her legs so she can't stand. And then threatens to shove a hot poker up her vagina if she doesn't suck him off. And so she sucks him off. And uh, then he fucks her and basically leaves a corpse behind to make it seem like she's dead. And he overwrites her memories to make her become his ally and changes her face and changes his face so they escape. Um, it's insane. It is insane. And from there, he goes on to meet this, uh, this wolf girl. He buys a slave girl who's a wolf girl, and she's really strong. And she's actually not a piece of shit. Um, her village was attacked. And she was kidnapped from it, and uh, he basically frees her. And he actually doesn't, like, do anything to her to, like, manipulate her too bad. He's like, hey, I know you want revenge. I'll help you get revenge if you side with me, and yada, yada, yada. And he, like, unlocks her full potential, and she, like, falls in love with him. And then him and uh, the other girl and uh, the wolf girl all fuck. It's, uh, it's great. And actually... I bought figures of both the uh, the pink-haired girl here and the wolf girl that came out because uh, they came as a set. It was uh, pretty great, yeah. And then after that, he gets revenge on the people who are trying to attack the Ice Wolf village uh, for the, the Ice Wolf girl, whose name I forget. I think it started with an I, like Inca, or well, not Inca. It was like. <clears throat> I don't remember. The, the pink-haired girl's name was Freya, though. And the, uh, uh, well, her name was Princess Flair officially, but then he changed it to Freya and uh, all that stuff. And then then they go and basically travel around for a while doing stuff and things. And his entire village gets kidnapped by Princess Norn and used against him to try and lure him out for revenge for Princess Flair, and then he basically kills the whole village. Well, the whole village dies because uh, the people kill them, and he gets revenge, because he's really driven by revenge. So he'll let people die just so he can get revenge uh, after they die on the people who killed them. <laughs> it's, it's really fucked up. He's not a good person, but he's such a good person. Uh, um, so anyway, he goes through some stuff and some things, and then uh, he goes to another town... And he uh, meets the demon lord, and he she she's not the demon lord yet. So he's like, he's, I'm gonna help you become the demon lord, and yada yada yada, because uh, she's actually a nice person. And then Princess Norn shows up, and she's with another one of the heroes who like treated him like shit, and like beat the shit out of him. And so he gets revenge on her by basically drugging her, and then putting her on like this stage with these men who were also drugged and aphrodisiac and he gave them two things an aphrodisiac and something that made them like crave flesh because they were like super hungry and so he was like hey i'll let you live if you can survive until morning so make uh make yourself useful to these guys sexually or they'll eat you and she ends up being eaten alive by these guys uh, because she cannot satisfy them sexually long enough to uh, deal with it. Uh, and her thing was that she really liked women, and she would abduct women and, like, basically destroy them, like, mentally and physically uh, to have their way with them. So, uh, technically, no loss to the world from that. Uh, and then he also captures Princess Norn and makes her his little sister, which, I don't know, it's a weird kink. I would have just made her someone else. But uh, the weird thing is, with Princess Fre Flair, he made her eyes colors different. But with Princess Norn, 
He left everything the same. He was just like, hey, your name's different now. And he changed her memories. Uh, so it still looks exactly like Princess Norn, which is hilarious to me. But uh, yeah, interesting. Like her hair color is the same and everything. He didn't even like change her facial structure or anything. It's literally just Princess Norn. But uh, she's obsessed with him. And then the final uh, episode, um, him, Princess Norn, uh, Princess Flare, uh, the wolf girl, and then this uh, night girl that he also recruited all have an orgy uh, on, on the bed. And uh, the demon, uh, uh, the future demon lord girl, she just uh, like masturbates outside the door because she's not like that uh, assertive to be like, yeah, I want in on this right now. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. I liked it. It was great. I hope there's a second season, but there's not going to be. It's going to be sad. I'm sad. Moving on. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to number two. Ah, oh, baby. Number two. Man. Okay. I'm going to go through this one and the next one without much spoilers. Because my mouth is getting really dry and I'm tired of talking. My throat's kind of fucking up with me now because it's been an hour and 36 minutes straight of talking. So, this one, number two, is So I'm a Spider, So What? Right? Honestly, I was not expecting this to be this great. It was amazing. It's, uh, it gets a little confusing at parts once you realize what's going on. Uh, and then you're just like, oh, wait, What? But I'm not going to get into that. Um, so the story is not linear. Let's put it that way. Um, there are times when stuff happens in the future and stuff happens in the past. And some things might be happening at the same time or different times. It just kind of depends. Um, but essentially, schoolgirl and her whole class gets wiped out by like a meteor or something. They get reborn in another world, uh, all separated and whatnot. Um, some of them have found each other because their teachers like finding them and stuff like that and bringing them together. Meanwhile, the main character gets reborn as a spider along with a bunch of like, uh, she, she comes out of an egg surrounded by a bunch of other spiderlings, right? And she's sentient and all that kind of stuff. And she like, okay, what the hell? Um, she's freaking out at first. She runs into this huge, like insectoid, like probably the mother or father, who skewers a bunch of her siblings and eats them. So she freaks out and runs away. And uh, from then, it's like survival. She goes around um, finding things to eat, leveling up, becoming stronger, and overall, becoming a badass. My god. And this show is its absolutely crazy. you will there, There's plot twists all over the place that you'll, you'll never expect. Like... I was like, oh, maybe the uh, maybe the main character is gonna find her friends, and you know, stuff's gonna be you know kind of different and stuff like that. But no, like my mind just it is great for like the ingenuity of the main character, for the plot twists, for the animation, the combat, the like, oh, everything. That's why this is number two. Arguably. Number one, to be honest. This season, number one. And it's not even done yet. Apparently, another episode's coming out next week, and it's a full, like, 24-ish episodes, apparently. It's already got two seasons going for it. So that is great, too. I'm looking forward to it. So far, the first season, uh, she's in a dungeon, and it's her going through the dungeon, trying to get out, trying to uh, survive. That's uh, pretty much the long and short of it, but it's it's amazing. Definitely recommend it. I was considering buying a uh, uh, an Nendoroid of her spider form with different stuff on it, but I was like, eh, <coughs> nah, I'm not going to spend money to buy a spider. Anyway. Oh, speaking of figures real quick, because I mentioned the spoiler section of Redo of Healer, but not the uh, other one the normal one, I am buying a figure of uh, Freya or Princess Flare, uh, the pink-haired girl, and also of the Ice Wolf girl that they have later down there. Uh, yeah. I like figures. Okay. 
number one. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Are you ready for number one? It's Higurashi, go, apparently. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned this or if I even talked about it in the last uh, video I did about anime. Because I, I know at one point I was like, man, they just made a fucking, like, Higurashi remake. That's all they did. They didn't, like, add anything new to it. They just remade it with like prettier characters and shit like that now the animation style it grew on me it might be a little bit shiny but when it gets dark it still gets dark okay now the thing you have to remember with higurashi is there's like three or four seasons that are like really old right that go through a lot of different story. And this one, I thought at first, because the first 10 episodes I watched, and I was like, wow, this is literally just the same stuff that's happened in the old one, but it's just like slightly different, right? And so at one point I had dropped it. I was like, I'm not gonna rewatch this show again. I like it, but I'd rather watch the other one that actually has like a bunch of seasons, right? So I let it go. I put it on the back burner and I was like, whatever. I got bored one night and I caught up to it. And around like episode 10, shit gets crazy. Okay? Like, oh my God new stuff started happening and i was like what what wait what uh huh no i've never seen this before what do you mean why is this happening and then it got better everyone it got even fucking better like what how impossible how are you getting even better what do you mean ah and so that's why it's number one, because not only is Higurashi a great show, a nice psychological thriller with like nice mystery thrown in there and like very nice memorable characters like Mion, uh, Rena Ryuga, fucking Satoko, fucking Rika, and uh, uh, Marabara Keichi-kun, the, the main character guy. Well, not the, not the main character in this one, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Motherfuckers. And then there's also uh, Shion. The uh, sister of uh, uh, fucking Mion as well. She and Mion. But uh, I, can rem I can remember all these fucking characters' names. This is how great of a show it is, okay? This is how great Higurashi is. In the other shows that are, like, also in my top, I can't remember everyone's name. I, uh, I can remember, like, the pink-haired girl in Redo of Healer. Everyone else drawing a blank. Um... I don't remember any names in So I'm a Spider, So What, but then again, the main character's name isn't really, like, mentioned. I remember Shu is a name of some other character in the show, because he was mentioned a lot. Um, Jobless Reincarnation, I remember Roxy because she's cute and she's a waifu, but, like, past that, I don't remember any names, other than Hori Mia and, uh, because Hori Mia, <laughs> their names are in the title, so it's easy. Yeah. But these ones, I remember all of them. Like, oh so good like bruh bruh like i cannot even explain to you right now i cannot how great this season of higurashi is because it is a new season it's not like it's an old season just like retold no it's a completely new one completely from all the other ones completely new completely new for a little while though at the beginning, the first 10, I was like, okay, whatever. Then it gets good, and then it gets, okay, is this a slice of life now? Then it gets good, then it gets better, then it gets great, and now there's another season coming out. Well, technically the same season, but they're taking a break for a little while, I think, and then it's going to come out 
which is another one that's like, motherfucker, let the whole thing come out at once, will ya? But, uh, man, man, it, ooh, it has been a fucking ride. Like, never have I gone from, like, I hate this motherfucker to, okay, you know what, maybe this guy's not so bad, I'm rooting for them. Or to, like, wow, I really love this character, I, I hate that this is happening to her, this is bad, to, like, wow, fuck this character in particular. Oh my god, why is she doing this? This makes no sense. What logic is this? Oh no. Like, oh my god. It is amazing. It is a may zing. And I will say this, because it's kind of important. It's not really a spoiler, okay? Because it's not like a story thing or anything, you know what I'm saying? Sorry, I'm just moving around a lot because I like watching my, like, my character move anyway. Okay. So, towards the beginning of the show, all the characters are important. They're all relevant and they're all showing up and doing different things. But, towards the, the middle and the end of this season, the important characters switch from everyone to Rika and Sudoku. Uh, Sudoku, oh my god. I can't talk right now, my tongue is bleh. Anyway, from the, the two lowly characters there. And, uh, <clears throat> well, let's just say I didn't see this coming. Now, if you've, if you've played the visual novel, you've probably seen it coming. I don't know if the visual novel had this included or not, or if this is a total, like, just a new story that was written up for this or not, but, oh my god. Y'all. Check it out. Check, check, check all, all of these shows that I've mentioned that I have fan, fanboyed about and whatnot. We're just going to go back to the, the normal uh, recap screen here to end. But a lot of these shows were good. A lot of them were not. Uh, I dropped a couple. Others I was really into. And, uh, man, I'm looking forward to doing another one of these. Um, in the coming weeks, when more of the, the, the spring uh, 2021 anime come out. I've already started watching a couple of them. And so far, I've liked what I've locked, watched. You know, not bad. Not, 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 not bad at all. Yeah. Just to kind of give you a l list of what I've been watching so far. There's uh, Mars Red, Too Sick to Call This Love, Godzilla Singular Point, uh, Princess of Snow and Blood, Eden's Zero Full Dive RPG, Tokyo Revengers, Yokai Watch, Shaman King, and uh, it's not actually. Hold on, it's uh, VV Fluorite Eyes Song. I actually, kind of think of that. I don't think I actually watched the Yokai Watch one. No, I did not. Wait, this isn't a current season. Oh no, it is. It's just one that started a year ago that I have not actually been watching. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually watched the Yokai one yet. So I'm going to see if I like it. And if I don't, I'm not going to watch it or talk about it, okay? So anyway, uh, I'm looking forward to some that are coming out. Because, uh, like, Demon Lord Retry's second season's coming out this one. And it's going to be fucking fun. Uh, none of the ones that I really want second seasons for are coming out yet, though. Like, um, fucking Overlord's next season. Goblin Slayer's next season. One Punch Man's next season. Drifter's. Uh, Demon Slayer's next season. Fucking Demon Lord Retry is. Uh, there's also, like, Arta Freta from Commonplace to World's Strongest, whatever that one is. Um, we're looking forward to that one, because I actually have a figure of the uh, the main heroine in that in that one. Uh, Yui, uh, her name is. Because uh, she's my... Uh, <clears throat> she's the trope of anime girl that I like the most. The, the, uh, the soft-spoken, blonde-haired red-eyed, flat-chested girls. Uh, those are those are my jam. Like, uh, Yami from, uh, 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 To Love Rue, or Kojiki no Yami, as you want to call her. Golden Darkness, however you want to say it. Uh, there's also, uh, the, uh, Eve from Black Cat, who I think kind of technically is based off of Yami, I think, I want to say. I want to say they're kind of the same person. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Thank you all for watching! And, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, Definitely check out some of these if you haven't already. Um, 
This is not, of course, the entire season of anime that there are out there. There were some idle ones, so many idle ones this season. Uh, there was like a skateboard one and some other stuff like that that I wasn't interested in. That I didn't even try or give a shot. Um, also, just to throw it out there, I watched this one uh, called... Uh, I don't remember the, the whole title, but it's uh, it's something... something Irmacoon? Uh, and it's about a human who gets abducted, taken to hell, and starts living as a, uh, a demon high schooler, kind of. And uh, it was pretty cool. It's apparently getting its second season this spring season. So I'm looking forward to watching that as well, because it was pretty cool. Yeah. All right. That'll do it for me, everyone. So uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, if you like this little discussion, go ahead and subscribe or like. And uh, you can get notified of when I do this uh, for the spring one. At least it's not going to be this drawn out for the spring one right away because it'll just be a generic. This one was kind of cool. This one seemed interesting because there's not much to build up on with the first couple of episodes that come out about a, a show, right? But the recap ones will be longer. The introductory ones will be shorter. I plan on doing this for every season of anime that comes out. So uh, thank you all. And you all have a lovely rest of your day, night, or whatever have you. Bye for now.